sexy friend, companion, and <laughs> uh, psychologist, Diana. Hello, Diana. How are you? Um, how are you? It's not, it's, it's alive. not like, uh, yeah, alive. That's good. That's good. TGIF. TGIF? Exactly, exactly. I don't know when we are going to publish this. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be on a Friday, but we are no recording matter, we it. We recorded it on a Friday. Exactly. And with Prosecco. And the topic yeah. still is online dating, which is a very controversial <laughs> but very interesting topic. Yes. And I think last week, uh, I mean in the last episode, uh, our listeners were promised real life encounters. And I, I, I have a very nice mm-hmm. rejection story oh. uh, and suck. honestly like it really it really diminishes your your self-confidence and uh, self-esteem yeah. which is very strange because you're getting these you know these these feedbacks from basically virtual virtual people virtual sources mm-hmm. Anyway, the thing was that uh, that I, I got matched up with matched up with with a girl who wasn't clearly shown in her photos, but I said, okay, like you know, I'm I'm not that shallow, which, okay. which I am, to you know judge people from the from their photos. I mean, cameras always distort, so I don't know why we still believe them, but whatever. Okay. So we matched up and we met and when when I saw her for the first time I thought that wow there I mean she wasn't my type for sure she was way shorter she was mm-hmm. I mean I I I wouldn't have swiped her right okay if I had seen her you know right earlier which makes me a douche, but yes, this is how I, uh, how, I mean, she wasn't my type. So, you know, the thing, I was thinking, I'm making this intro way longer than it should be. Anyway, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe we should have one beer and then I, I come up with some bullshit uh, excuse and then I leave. Mm-hmm. And she comes up to me and says, "Well, hello. Would you would you mind if I go back home?" And I started laughing what? because I didn't like. She was obviously rejecting me, and I I know how to put it. You know, she was really not my type. So it was very interesting that I wanted to reject her, but it was like boom bang in in my face rejection and i remember i was laughing uh, until i get home like what what the hell was this which i guess it was it was like a funny story but when you got when you get rejected and when you get ghosted it still has an impact on me and and uh, on you sorry and i really want to ask you this as a psychologist how come we because i guess it affects us all how come we we never meet someone Mm. but the rejection rejection still hurts yeah why is that so do you you have an answer for that well because we're we're social animals okay and so it's it's really interesting that that you bring this up um we don't really have a physical brain so our physical structures within our brain are neurobiologically speaking we are not designed to 
cope with the amount of information or rejection that we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Because, let's face it, if you go out one night, right, with your friends in a bar and like you're just, your sole plan is to hit on girls, probably you're going to walk into a conversation, be told no, walk away from that conversation. It's just going to be a moment's thing and mm -hmm. then maybe if you're really lucky or if you're really like uh, in a vibe, um, you'll be speaking to a girl, maybe you'll get her number, maybe you, you like you guys are going to go home and whatever. And this, it, the same goes for that girl. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the online dating and because of the online sphere, that uh, pool of people has been artificially and I say this with a very heavy um, lifting meaning, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. has been inflated. So artificially, we can realistically um, have access to more people. Okay. And those metrics are going to be more superficial because I could be a super unattractive girl, but then still could be swiping on people that I'm like, far outside of their expectation and then those those people could also be swiping with people of their own who are far outside of their area mm -hmm. and um it's still not going to make any sense in that in that way like psychologically our relationships have to make sense have to have a context have to have some kind of meaning like we can't match up fully to people who are completely outside of our like realm and they're 90 percent catfishing or um dating apps that de definitely tend to create false expectations for all of us um they are also tending to be biased for girls because there's a lot of people out there who are sorry who are just looking for sex so obviously they just swipe 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 mm -hmm. okay but then the algorithm sort of punishes them because you can do that uh, otherwise your, your your profile gets downgraded mm -hmm. so you can just swipe right in the hope of getting laid because then the algorithm kind of knows that you're what you're doing is that you know you don't you don't care so you are not going your profile is not going to be shown as many prospective partners as possible really yeah which apps A any kind of dating apps like this is really? this is yeah i mean for tinder sure you can do this because it's, it's just an exploitation and abuse of the the whole system the whole uh because then it, it well, doesn't because you don't you want you you will lose the classification you, you will lose the the so, okay let's say quality of uh, of matches which I don't believe in, but if there's a profile, say, yeah. if, if there's a profile that 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 say okay, it doesn't matter. I, I want to get laid. Let's say right. so. I I'll swipe everyone to the right. Why is this profile on the same level as, for example, another one that is really taking the time to read and 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 examine the um, the other profiles right so in another conversation that we had you've mentioned this uh, black mirror episode oh which yeah was, um, basically no matter with whichever way the the, the situation turned mm -hmm. for those two people they yeah. would always end up and they would even break the algorithm to be together mm -hmm. so no matter which way they would end up in whichever scenario they would always end up back together that's not what's happening with our <laughs> with our modern day profile. Sorry to be disappointing. In yeah, that you way. can see my face now. So I know. Sorry. I'm disappointed. Sorry, babe. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I'm I'm really sorry. I I wish I could be giving you better news, but I I do think that the better news is that we can still find the people that we like, and that we can still find, especially in a country like Malta. Okay. Um, we can still do that without necessarily having to subject ourselves to something that's a relatively superficial sorting method like an al algorithm or like a 
extremely superficial su sorting method like um, just pictures, people's pictures and like just swiping, swiping, swiping until it's fine that you lose some status if you just swipe, it's okay, but like it doesn't really take away from the fact that you don't really match with your actual compatibilities because psychologically speaking, your mo m most chances you get from actually getting a compatibility would come from um, connecting with people from your vicinity, from your community, mm -hmm. from your job, from your interests, from your hobbies, um, not from some dating app. Also because if you really think about how these apps are designed in the first place, they are not designed to find you your soulmate. They uh -huh. are not designed to find you the one person that if you get with them, you will basically leave the app forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. This is not what they're designed to do. They are designed to keep you coming back. So what that means is that they will match you with someone who's like more or less superficially connected to you. But then chances are that relationship is going to fail because the design of these apps is to keep you coming back. You know, it's also very interesting when when they say, sorry, when they ask me, so what are you looking for? And I always find this question useless because you can say, yeah, I'm here. You can lie saying, yeah, I'm here for a very serious relationship. Obviously. But, um, but you know, I had this very interesting case as well when I told the girl, let's just meet up. We don't, let's, let's not label things. Let's just pretend we just m meet up for a coffee, for a beer, whatever, and then we'll see the vibe. Uh, and, uh, but she wanted to label things. And I told her, listen, like if you, if you start labeling things, you will start feeling frustrated because, you know, you want a serious relationship. So mm. you're limiting your possibilities and your mind when we meet up and I do something that, that maybe in an offline, more conventional, more old school way of, you know, getting to know each other, maybe this thing, what I did, would be looked over when we meet after an online match you will so focus on the things that you want that you at the end of the day you won't give me a chance you know what i mean like i'm an offline person uh as we we talk about yeah. and when we you know when i i'm basically i'm trying to be funny or trying to you know get a deep conversation i might do things that I wouldn't do on a date because it's a label. You have to, you're soup. And I, 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 I actually, I throw up when I, when I, um, when I think about date. Yeah. And the yeah. guy ends up bringing a flower and a box of chocolate, and then he has to compliment the girl. This, this is the thing when I want to shoot myself in the face with the gun. Because I don't think that yeah. this is this works anymore. But but there is the mindset that online dating gives us, through which or with which we are we are examining these kind of like first dates. I also have this thing like, what do you call the first meetup? And I I uh, told the girl that it's a meeting, and she. She took it by mistake. She took it like a business meeting. Professional, I said, yeah. yeah, yeah, but no, 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 it's like a meetup or how do you call it? Like, I wouldn't, would you call it a date? Yes, of But it's course. not a date. Why is it a date? But do call it a date. But why? Well, I mean. It's not a date. Psychologically, we want to set certain boundaries with things. Um... I think it depends. Like, so this is what, what makes uh, the modern scene a little bit complicated because there's many different dimensions because everything freed up. We're no longer under the pressure of arranged marriages or under the pressure no, come of on. Like, social but first convention. You, you have to but like each other. 
and then exactly, you go on a date. Exactly. So, so exactly, we like each other. There's no problem with calling that a date. It is a date. It's okay? a problem because then you have preset expectations. Mm, how? Well, it's a date. It involves emotions. It has to be romantic. Whereas we we skip the very crucial part to getting to know each other, to, to like each other. And when we first met in real life, I don't know if I will like the other person. But, okay, okay. So I've been... None of my previous exes have been uh, met online, okay? Like, so you never I, had I, an online... Uh, re- I mean, I, a relationship from online? I have not had online. a prop... No. Really? Oh, of course not. Wow, of oh, course. Oh, <laughs> I love no. it. Okay. Um, so... <laughs> Obviously, that means that I would have met this person, socialized with this person, got to like this person, had the spark, had the... But you don't know what I'm talking about "Mm." then. I do know. But then there was a a date. There was a, oh shit, we like each other, let's go out on a date. But wait, wait, was it the offline? Yes. That's what I'm talking about. That's my point. But this is the point. Like, regardless of how the lead up to the date is... It's still a date. You should still not no, be afraid No, because to be we skipped. We skipped the part of of deciding that we like each other. So, okay, so we can say this is not a official date. Let's just be Exactly. Let's just it, but like define it, but just say Why it. would I have to define because it? Because it's not a date. That's that's my definition. Well, because online makes it harder. Because online dating means that you meet someone, you connect with them on the app, you have a chat somehow with them, and then you go on a, on a date. Mm-hmm. And that's the expectation that gets, that gets set. And this is to me what that will mean. Like, if I had to meet someone who is interesting to me right now, and like I like them enough to graduate them from the app to a call, to a whatever then to actually meeting in person, I would have to go through a huge bunch of steps. But we are not wired like this. We need to have the offline no. offline not thing. We wired like this. Yeah. But then define it. Why would I have to define it? I don't know. Define it because it's better for everyone's sake. It's better for everyone's mental health. Yeah. Give me money. I will, I will define it. But all jokes okay. aside... I think that when you when you meet up for the first time, so the first time you're seeing each other offline, it can be a date. Because it when, can wait, wait, be a date. no, it cannot be a date. It's it's just something that you you have your, you have the taste. Because just think back, think back all all of your relationship. You said you you had you know offline. Uh, I mean, None offline. Of my offline. exes I've met online. Perfect. No. So you, you must have a period when you were like, ah, oh, okay, so there's this guy. Okay, I, I kind of mm-hmm. like him. Period so blah, blah, blah. Ha, ha, ha. Exactly, exactly. But that, that's what's lost in, during online date. Because, okay, we start chatting. And ha, ha, we both like the same satanic uh, metal group. Okay, so she must be cool. Let's meet up. And then... I found myself repulsed because she has a voice of a man. Did that actually happen? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I don't, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know her. I don't, and, she, and she doesn't know me. So maybe I have, you know, I have something in me, on me, that she doesn't like. She doesn't like that I, I have glasses. Or maybe she doesn't like my voice because it's too sexy, obviously, and she couldn't. Obviously, that's hard to resist. I know she wouldn't have been able to. She wouldn't be able to live with it. That's the thing, and it's these hard are to the. Live with a voice that's too sexy. I know, but this is the thing, or or or, or smell like scents. I love scents. It's also hard to sp- live with someone who smells too sexy. Oof. I mean, ask my exes. It is. It's Jenny hard. Yeah, literally. And that's what she said. And I'm so happy that <laughs> I, could, I could do this right now. 
I still okay. Well, let, let's let the. I mean, let let uh, let us. Um, how do you call? I mean, I don't even know. So I want you, the listeners, <laughs> decide who's right. Diana says uh, it can be called a date, which is obviously not true, or me, who has the podcast, who says that it can be no pressure. But no pressure. no yeah. pressure. Yeah, obviously no pressure. Um, okay. Anyway, so it's very for me. It's very interesting that uh, that you never had a date, and 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 honestly, uh, wait, wait. Honestly, no, no, it, no, it's I've had dates. No, I've had adventures. I've had affairs, but okay, but for uh, yeah, 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 okay, no. okay, no, no. Mm. But I, 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 in uh, in all respect, I, I really, really respect that because sometimes. I feel that that this is this is this is very needy. It's a very needy thing, and also we haven't answered. You haven't answered actually. Mm. Why does rejection feel so bad? Even even if I haven't met uh, the other one. Oh my God! Like that on rejection could be a whole new entire episode because it's it's very important, especially in uh-huh. our our day and age and our culture because we we were raised and nowadays like the the prevalent cultural beliefs are that you know young people nowadays can't handle rejection and so on and so forth but the reality is we're not faced we're mm-hmm. faced with more rejection mm-hmm. and the the generations after us are even more so than the ones before us ever had okay because of the amount of exposure we have to so many people, because of the level of access we have to so many people, we don't really even understand, we don't even comprehend consciously sometimes, the amount of rejection we could possibly be uh, dealing with whenever we put ourselves out there online, whenever we put ourselves out there on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, X, whatever. It's a very, very powerful tool. Rejection has deep-seated psychological harms on the human brain. And they, they are harms to which our brain has been equipped to handle in small amounts. And we are experiencing incredible amounts nowadays. So, so you're saying that yes. it's not only... Okay, so you're saying that it's rather the quantity that... Yes. Okay, but still, I mean, I, I, I'm, 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 I've been rejected by many. Yes. Well, don't say yes. You, you should be saying like, oh, really? I don't believe it, Joel, because you're clearly desirable. We're all rejected by many nowadays. Okay. I've been rejected by many. Everyone has been rejected by many. Okay, but, um, but why, why is it that, for example, one is more hurtful than the other? That comes down to our own psychological wounds and our own uh-huh. psychological var- vulnerabilities. Not everyone is hurt by the same same things equally. Mm. Like I am working with people who have survived different traumas, different exposures to different kinds of traumas, and I can tell you that like one the the, the people could be could be experienced to ten different types of stress seeing events mm-hmm. and the ones that would get to them would be probably the ones that match up to their own psychological wounds and to their markup their history and so on so everyone reacts to things differently it really does okay kids i think you've learned a lot today whoop, whoop. i will ask diana to summarize what online dating is and whether it works or not if not why if so why Mm. and then uh, we are going to conclude our episode so Diana how would you how would you summarize what we've learned today so um, trust yourself Mm -hmm. don't rely on the app uh, to tell you the value of your worth for sure Uh, and Always, always stay self-aware. 
always stay uh, self-aware and I really loved and cherished this um, this thought that you you said in um, another um, conversation of ours that th these apps are algorithm driven yes and they are like business business oriented oriented apps. they are so out there to make money so so remember that they're not out there to make you meet your soulmate they're out there to make you come back to them as quickly as mm -hmm, possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Diana. Uh, do you think uh, we are going to have another episode on, uh, I don't know, on another oh, yes. interesting thing? I'm always down to speak about interesting things. Good, good, good. Thank you so much for uh, being here. And I hope uh, you, on the other end, enjoyed our uh, Prosecco yes. kissed conversation. <laughs> Prosecco, so, baby. Yeah. See you next time and thanks for listening. Take ciao, care. ciao. Ciao. Cheers. City lights are cold.